multiple people commented who personally knew her. They said she hated him. She wasn't right in the head. I'm glad that they got her away from the younger siblings before anything was to happen. They were just as in danger as he was. Once he was out the way, she would have turned her hatred not to herself, but to one or both of her other kids. Okay, I got 14 minutes, so I'm going to make some shake. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, cool. What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, B. Octavia, and I am back with another video. Now, if you see this fall on me, it, it look like it's steady, and I hope it is. But I'm just going to stay very, very still. I'm, I'm getting my recording set up, all set up, and it's going to be so much better for 2024. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is B. Octavia. This here is my channel. I've had it for about four or five years now, I believe. Just had an anniversary. Just passed one million in total views. You feel what I'm saying? So we got a lot to celebrate. And on top of all of that, we finna be at 13,000 subs. I want to say thank y'all so much. And I got so many ideas and content on the way. So, I'm 27 and I'm from Washington, D.C. It's a lot going down in the DMV, which is D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. And today, we are going to be jumping into some Maryland news. Now, I know y'all didn't seen it. You know, I know y'all didn't seen the travesty and the tragedy that recently happened where a mother stabbed her 21-year-old son to death. Let's get into it because she wasn't automatically arrested, okay? They was investigating it as some type of self-defense, but I'm going to get into all that, all right? And then I'm going to give her a lashing in my conclusion. Oh, yeah, and this brings me to the fact that I have to talk about the other mother that went to jail behind her son, which was in, like, the second grade or something, bringing a gun to school which is good that she went to jail. But let's let's stay on topic right now. The mother of a 21-year-old young man has been charged in connection to his fatal stabbing that occurred inside the home they shared. On January 25th, early in the morning, roughly around 7 a.m., officers were called to Greenfield Drive for a report of a stabbing. The victim in this case was pronounced dead shortly after arriving to the hospital. He leaves behind two younger siblings. In the initial preliminary investigation, the suspect, Ms. Rivera, stabbed her son in between 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. during an argument between mother and son. The 42-year-old mother wasn't arrested off the rip because it was being investigated as, as a possible self-defense case against family members. After PG Police consulted with the PG County State's Attorney's Office, they decided to charge her with first-degree murder and more. Once that decision was made, Rivera was taken into custody. Once the news broke that this mom stabbed her son, multiple people commented who personally knew her and her and her son's relationship. They said she hated him and she wasn't right in the head. This was before she was arrested, so I'm glad that they got her away from the younger siblings before anything was to happen because they were just as in danger as he was, even though it may seem like, you know, he was the full-on and only target. Once he was out the way, she would have turned her hatred not to herself, but to one or both of her other kids. And on the outside looking in, a lot of people will and did say he should have moved out at 18 and, and all of these things that you can just say. But in our community, the black community, as well as the Spanish community, Mexicans, within their culture as well, Family lives with family for a very long time. 
and sometimes it's it does run its course and folks got to get away from each other and and figure that out right but it's in our culture to be with family does it turn into coddling or does it turn into this yes a lot of times it does it's like the blind leading the blind we can't say that he should have moved out this that and the fourth when we don't even know how long it took her to move out from with her people you know so it's a lot of judgment when it comes to that um what i can say about this is him potentially going into college and before college working on getting that full scholarship and and going out of state getting away from her that could have saved his life having extracurricular activities could have saved his life um being out of the house for most of the time you know what i mean just staying really busy if you're not working you at school if you're not at school you you're studying somewhere like even if you live there you got to put your distance up you really do you got to put your distance up and a parent that is so like aggressive towards you and this that and the fourth you got to make sure that you're taking care of you it's it's a very slippery slope when it comes to the dynamic of mother and son um uh, mother and child period it's very complicated i can say that within my own family so we have to know that it's okay to distance ourselves as much as possible as much as we see fit from family and again that's hard to do when you live with them in most situations especially if it's domestic violence involved in family violence sometimes it is better to go to a shelter especially if you don't have no kids yourself and it's not that pressure on your shoulders that you know you got to lug a child around with you through that you know um it's better to do it that way than potentially being woke up to somebody aka your mother somebody who's not supposed to do that at all your mother stabbing you and i don't know the circumstances as far as like if they were both standing or he was laying down or what have you i'm sure that will come out in time but let's go back to the facts so she is again charged with first degree murder rightfully so i can't even imagine what he's been through with this person person being his mother and with a lot of people knowing that she has so much hatred towards him don't get me wrong kids and teenagers and and young adults they are a pain and a headache kids are you know what i mean but you should never treat your kids like a stranger on the street that you just got into an argument with it's one thing to have a disagreement but it's a whole nother thing to grab a knife um i've had many many altercations with my family and never thought to grab and swing a knife you know that's that should never be that should be the least thing that you're worried about doing i i can only imagine what all of them as as her children have been through but sometimes we have to also know that it's okay to report this shit if you know something and you know that something can happen because it's happening back to back at this point it's happening back to back and they're taking it literal as far as i brought you into this world i can take you out that should never be taken literally especially if he ain't had no knife he wasn't no like ultimate threat to you yeah he's growing into being a man but still you're the ultimate aggressor and you're trying to take him down in a way that he didn't even think of taking you down you know so it's just that dynamic where if you know that and you know the background y'all should have reported this y'all should have got involved and just made a report where is the father i'm sure we'll see him in court but you got to feel some type of guilt for not having your son um if his father is deceased i'm i'm sorry to hear that but um this is why the other parent is important when the mother is going through so much mentally and she really doesn't need to have no kids in her custody this is when the men should step up and do their part this is when it happens not you going off and making a whole another family and doing all that shit 
you got to stay in your kid's life and know what the fuck is going on, period. So I will see y'all in my next video. Thank y'all for tuning in. Peace.